awesome. Now, it goes from light to dark. From the left hand side, light, dark to right. And then there's texture and detail on that. So I'm first going to do another wet and wet technique. I'm going to wet, wet this area here with some clear water. I'm actually going to use the grey that I had here and a little bit of alizarin crimson to make a kind of pinky kind of grey. Although they're white, um, white blossom with a little bit of pinkness in the shadow. So here we go. I want to drop in here now just very subtly. This very subtle grey. And then here it gets darker. So I'm going to put more of this bluey grey that I've mixed here. And I'm just dotting that in. Just dabbing it in. Up to this edge here. Can you see there's an edge here? Just here. And I'm going to soften this area here too. I want to add a little bit of I've just added some lemon yellow to the mix here. Into the same mix, I want to bring a little bit of greenness in this top right hand side of the cherry tree just here. While it's still wet, I'm now going to come to this purpley grey that I used up here and I'm going to drop it in the bottom right hand corner of the trees, of the, of the cherry trees. Just dropping it in. I hope you can see I'm going to get an effect of light to dark. Light to dark. And within the cherry tree, there's little pockets of dark. So I'm just coming in now and just dropping that in. I'm getting soft little blurry pockets of dark. I'm now going to go a little bit darker at the base here. A bit more lemon yellow maybe. Lovely. I'm going to let that dry. Next area is this area here. I'm going to do the same technique again. I'm going to wet it just slightly. And I'm going to use alizarin crimson with a little bit of ultramarine blue and a bit of the grey I used before. And I'm just going to wash that in. You see this very pretty pink colour coming down to the edge here of the of the cherry trees. In this top section here there's a hedge and I'm using some of the greeny grey for that here. I'm dropping that in there while it's still wet. softening off this left hand edge here with a bit of clear water. Now I'm going to add in the foreground of this field it becomes a warmer red and I'm adding a little bit of cadmium red to that and it's a completely different kind of pink right up to the edge of the cherry trees and now at the base here there's some other little bushes. I can't quite see what they are. 
but they're lemon yellow in colour. So I'm going to dot that one in there into the wet paint. Another one here. Back with the pink. Hopefully you can see, just with these little white on white techniques, I'm getting pretty little soft, soft effects. Done this little middle section here with the field, pink field, the white cherry blossom here. Might have gone a little bit grey just in the middle here, we'll see this bit of hedge area here. I'm now going to do this area here which is some lighter green hedge and a crop. I'm not sure what it is but it's basically a yellow or yellowy green crop. Now I want to be the wet or wet. I want to be consistent in this this whole area that I'm doing it's in the distance. And what I'm showing you really is how to paint trees in the distance. You won't always use this wet or wet technique but it's quite a hazy picture this, and I want to try and get this hazy effect. Lemon yellow, some ultramarine blue, and that's my green. I'm going to dot that in. I'm going to make it a bit darker, add a bit more blue to it, a bit of this grey into it to make it a bit more grey. It's a bit too, too bright. And I'm just dotting it in again, same as the other techniques, dotting that green in. Dotting it in. At the top of the hedge, it's a more of a grey colour here, so I'm just going to dot that in again there. A bit more of a grey here. And now I'm going to add more lemon yellow. Coming lighter and more lemony in colour here. This is this field here. Still wet. I'll just drop in some of the grey bits in the middle there. This is the edge of the field just there, and this is the shadows here. I'm just dropping in. Now underneath here, there's a continuation of this pink field, except it's more more cadmium in it this time, a little bit more brownie. So I've used a mixture of the cadmium red and alizarin crimson with the grey and you'll see now when I drop this colour in it's slightly more brown in nature. Maybe a bit more there. And now I'm coming in with this tree here. Now, this, these trees here are the closest ones so far, therefore they need to be the darkest, and they're going to have the most colour in. So I'm putting cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue, and some of the grey mixed in just to grey it off. So here we go now. It's coming in. dropping it in the foreground. It's still quite grey, so I might just add a little bit of lizard and crimson. Red's a great colour to add into to greens if they're too bright. Don't want any bright colours here. It's all very, very subtle and soft. Hopefully you can see Tonally, this area here should be. I'm just going to soften off the edge of those trees. Now, this tree was green, but this one here is more pinky. 
So I'm going to add Lither and Crimson to the Ultramarine Blue again. And I'm going to do this more pinky colour here. Of another tree that's in front. And it's slightly tonally lighter than the one in front. And that comes um, there. Let's drop some colour in there. I'm going to soften off the edge here. I don't want to make a feature of that. We'll, we'll come to that later. Now, this area here should be darker, so I'm going to come in again and just drop a darker colour in. Can you see how I'm using the tip of my brush? I'm not brushing over it. I'm just releasing the colour from the tip into the green and it should actually grow outwards and create a really nice effect. I'm going to carry on feeding that area with a bit more colour. This edge here is a bit hard, I'm going to soften it off. A bit of clear water on my finger. And this edge here is a bit hard. 